In this segment, we will introduce titration reactions. And one form of a titration reaction is the acid-base neutralization reaction. Let's look at an example. Here is a solution of hydrochloric acid in a beaker. We've also added an indicator, which is a molecule that changes its color as a function of the number of protons in solution. Above the solution, we have a barrette. And through the barrette, we're going to add a basic solution, let's say sodium hydroxide. Now we know if we add OH- to an acidic solution, the OH- and the protons will interact to form water. So the more OH- we add, the fewer protons we have in solution. In the neutralization reaction, we're going to add enough of the base such that all the protons will be converted into water molecules, effectively neutralizing the solution. During this process, we can look at the color of the solution, which reports how many protons are left. So the color change will tell us how close we are to the neutralization point. We can also think of this reaction in the reverse order. We can start with a basic solution and then add an acidic solution. We add enough of the acid to take out all the OH- in the original solution, effectively neutralizing the solution. So, in this type of titration reaction, what we're trying to do is to balance the number of protons in solution with the number of OH- in solution. Let's look at an example. In this example, we start with a basic solution. It is sodium hydroxide. And we're adding an acidic solution, which is hydrochloric acid. We're going to add enough of the hydrochloric acid such that all the OH- in the original solution are converted into water, thus neutralizing the solution. To solve this problem, let's first consider what kind of species I have in the solution. The hydrochloric acid contributes H+, and CO-. The sodium hydroxide contributes sodium ions and hydroxide anions. The reaction that happens in terms of the net ionic equation is the proton interacting with the hydroxide anion, forming water. Now what we want to calculate is how many protons do we need to add? In order to determine that, we need to determine how many OH- we have in the original solution. To find the concentration, we can use volume times molarity. The volume of the sodium hydroxide solution is 25 milliliters. We convert it quickly into liters and then multiply by the molarity of the sodium hydroxide solution. We find 1.25 times 10 to the minus 2 moles of sodium hydroxide, which means we also have 1.25 times 10 to the minus 2 moles of hydroxide anions. Now we know the number of hydroxide anions, and we can convert that into the number of protons we need to add to neutralize the solution. 1.25 times 10 to the minus 2 moles of hydroxide anions times the mole ratio of the protons versus the hydroxide anions, 1 to 1, gives us 1.25 times 10 to the minus 2 moles of protons. This is how many protons we have to add in order to neutralize the original basic solution. The last step we have to take is to convert the number of moles of the protons into the volume of the hydrochloric acid solution that we need to add. So, we know that volume times molarity equals the amount of moles. So, volume times 0.15 molar must equal 1.25 times 10 to the minus 2 moles of protons, which means that the volume equals 1.25 times 10 to the minus 2 moles divided by the molarity, 0.15 molar. That gives us 8.33 times 10 to the minus 2 liters, and that is 83.3 milliliters. So we have to add 83.3 milliliters of hydrochloric acid to neutralize the basic solution. In the second and last example, we start again with the basic solution, barium hydroxide. And we're going to add an acidic solution, hydrochloric acid. But in this particular case, we're not quite sure if we completely neutralize the original solution. In order to determine that, we want to find out if there are excess reagents. If there are excess H plus or excess OH minus left in the solution after the reaction has completed. Let's try to do this. First, we try to list again the ions in solution. We have 
H plus and CO minus from the hydrochloric acid, and barium ions and hydroxide ions from the barium hydroxide. The net ionic equation is, once again, protons interacting with OH minus, forming water molecules. Now, what we want to calculate is the number of moles of H plus and OH minus, and then compare them and see if there's a limiting and an excess reagent. So let's start finding out how many protons we have in the solution. Volume times molarity is the recipe that we will use here. The volume of the hydrochloric acid solution is 75 milliliters. We convert it quickly into liters and then multiply it by the molarity. We find a total of 1.88 times 10 to the minus 2 moles of protons. We can do the same type of calculation to find the number of moles of hydroxide anions. This is the volume of the barium hydroxide solution. We multiply the volume by the molarity. But then we have to realize that each barium hydroxide unit produces two hydroxide anions. So two moles of hydroxide anions for each one mole of barium hydroxide. Completing this calculation, and we find the number of moles of hydroxide anions in solution, 2.55 times 10 to the minus 2. We'd like to determine which one of these, the proton or the OH minus, is the limiting reagent. We know that the balance ratio is 1 mole of protons for each 1 mole of OH minus, which is 1. However, the actual numbers are different. The actual ratio is the following. It is 1.88 times 10 to the minus 2 divided by 2.55 times 10 to the minus 2. That is 0. 737. That number is less than 1, which means the numerator is the limiting reagent. H plus is a limiting reagent. H plus will run out during the reaction. OH minus will be in excess. So after the reaction has been completed, I have no H plus left, but I do have OH minus left. The solution is still basic. It is not neutralized. What I calculate here, then, is the concentration of OH- that is left in the solution after the reaction has completed. So let's look at the following expression. In the numerator, we find the original number of moles of OH-2.55 times 10 to the minus 2. Of that, 1.88 times 10 to the minus 2 moles has reacted with the protons, forming water. So those are gone. The difference between those two numbers is the amount of OH- left in a solution. The denominator indicates the total volume of the solution, which is the sum of the two solutions that I combine. Look at this expression again. We see, in the numerator, the number of moles of OH- that I have left after the reaction has completed. 6.7 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of OH-. The total volume is 0.3 liters. So if I complete this division, I find the molarity of OH- that I've left after the reaction has been completed. It is, in this case, 2.23 times 10 to the minus 2 molar of OH-. This completes our calculation.